Hi, I'm Dr. Yan Fu Ko from National Taiwan University. And today I'm going to talk about how to program robots using Embedded C. And uh, this lecture is for the course Embedded Robotics. It is a joint course offered by both the University of Georgia and the National Taiwan University. And this is the outline for today's lecture. And in the very beginning, I will talk about the microcontroller uh, and then uh, move to how to program the microcontroller and download program that you, you compile to the microcontroller and then give some examples about how to uh, control the CM510 and the robot. And that will include the functions on CM510, like the bottom LED, and then later move to the peripheral, like uh, the dynamic show and Zigbee and sensors like that. So we know that uh, for the bioloid robot, we use CM510 to control the servo motors and to get the uh, sensor readings. And so that CM510, this controller basically is the brand of the robot. Okay, and inside this CM510 controller, there's a microcontroller that basically follow the program you write and do everything. And this CM uh, this microcontroller is basically an AVR controller. And this is the architecture of the microcontroller. So my microcontroller basically is like a mini computer. Uh, there's a CPU inside the microcontroller, and they are memories like the flash ROM, RAM, ABU ROM, and they are uh, input and output like IOs, the IO pins that you can communicate to uh, the peripherals, and. Uh, Basic idea is like uh, this. The flash ROM is work like a hard drive. It store the program that you write, and uh, the CPU will access this program that you write and follow it to do the uh, do, do to do the task step by step. And it use RAM as the memory for calculation or for uh, temporary storage the data that uh, it get maybe from sensor or uh, from some other devices. So uh, pretty much work like a mini computer. And this is the uh, pinout of the microcontroller. So the microcontroller is ABR brand name and uh, model number is 80 mega 2561 and it has uh, 64 pin outs. Here we can see, oops. Okay, 64 pin outs. And uh, some pins are used for like providing voltage to the microcontroller. We can see this AVCC ground. And here we have ground VCC here too. And most of pins are used for input and output. So most of the pin, they have name like a P, A, P, B. This is P, A, P, B is over here. And we have P, C, P, D, P, E, and P, F. Okay, so P denotes for port, so what we have basically six ports and each port has uh, most of them have has uh, eight pins okay and uh, the port is used for input or output and you can uh, basically uh, control them either for input or output and some of them uh, have alternative functions that is uh, in this uh, parenthesis like here we have ad7 the AD uh, denotes for analog to digital conversion. 
Okay, and some other pins have other functions. And here is the key spec of the microcontroller. And here we know that the uh, flash ROM size is 256 uh, K bytes. And this is basically tells you how big the program you can write and uh, store it in the microcontroller. And CPU runs at 16 megahertz. And 54 out of 64 pins are used for either input or output. And we have two UART channels that is used to communicate to either PC or Zigbee. And the other UART channel is used to communicate with the dynamic show. And we have eight ADC channels that is used to uh, access sensor readings. I will talk about that later. And those ADC channels are 10-bit uh, resolution. And here uh, is a table of microcontroller pinouts. Okay. Uh, let me show you this figure first. So basically, uh, we know that uh, there is a microcontroller inside the CM510. Okay. But it is enclosed and we cannot see uh, from the external. So the thing is, how the pinouts of the microcontroller connected to the pinouts of this CM510. And that's the first thing that we have to know in order to program that microcontroller. So this figure and the table in the previous slides basically tells you about this information. Okay, and so here in this figure, we can see Here, okay. So for the LEDs, they belongs to PC. That is port C, from zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And for the buttons here, the start button uh, belongs to the port D zero. And for the uh, up down left right button. Uh, they belongs to the port E, okay? And uh, there are some other pinouts, like for the ADC channel that is used for sensor access, okay? You can see those connectors are uh, connecting to the ports. So the port name and the pin number is given all over here. Okay, so let's go back to see that table over here. Okay, so this basically tells you everything. And uh, you can, every time you have a problem to uh, write pro C program, uh, you can come back to uh, refer this table and see uh, what exactly you will need to write in your program. Okay, so I'm going to show you uh, the first example of blinking LED. So we know that uh, on CM510, there are seven LEDs. Okay, and these LEDs are connected to pin, uh, to port C, pin bit 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is to program the microcontroller and to turn on the LED from power, TXD, RXD, AUX, uh, manager, program, and play, and go back to power and do that again and again indefinitely. Okay. And what we need to do to program a microcontroller is first to, uh, to write a program in C language and compile it and then download the program to your microcontroller. And I'm going to show you step by step how this is achieved. Okay, so basically, uh, I have to assume that you have installed some software on your PC. 
Okay, so what you will need are these softwares. There are four. Okay, you need AVR Studio, Whenever, Eclipse, and Eclipse AVR Plugin. Okay, so AVR Studio is a software uh, provided by the microcontroller manufacturer, uh, the Admail. And uh, whenever uh, is a uh, IDE, it supply some uh, some libraries and source file for the AVR, so we will need it. And Eclipse is basically the IDE, the integrated development uh, environment that we are going to use. So basically, it's a compiler and word editor that you can uh, write your program in and uh, use it uh, to make a executable file and then download it uh, to the mic uh, microcontroller. And this Eclipse will need an AVR plugin in order to uh, compile the program that is made for the AVR microcontroller. And this full program has to be installed in this order, AVR Studio, Whenever, and Eclipse, and Eclipse AVR plugin. Okay, and after you have those programs ready, you, have to, you can run Eclipse and then write your program and use Eclipse to compile the program to make a executable file. And then after that, you can download the program to the microcontroller. Okay, and then, then basically that will make your microcontroller follow your program to do the test that you want. So let's see how to do this. Okay, now let's run Eclipse. Now this is the user, user interface of the Eclipse. In the left, you can see a lot of project names. And in the right, in this window, it's a text editor that you can use. Uh, you can type your programs in here later. And let's get started to create a new project. So you click File, then New, then move to C Project and click it. A window will pop up. Now, the first thing you have to do is to choose a project name. And let's just choose test, T-E-S-T. -E and here in the middle, you see where the program will be stored. So you, can, you have to remember this. And later when you have, you have to check the program, you can go to that folder. And next is to, to choose the appropriate project type. Okay, because we are writing this program for AVR controller. So we choose this AVR cross target application and use the AVR GCC tool chain. Then click next. And here you don't have to change anything. Just click next again. And now we have to choose the microcontroller that we are using. We are using 2561 and it runs at 16 megahertz. Okay, and click finish. A project named test will be created for you. Now double click this test. You'll see basically there's nothing but just a folder called includes. Okay, so includes are where the uh, header file file are stored. Okay, so next you have to create a source file. Now right click on test and then move to new, choose source file. Okay, and in this window we type source file name main.c and click finish. And this source file will be created for you. And here you can edit it. Okay, editing that. You, you can edit the main.c over here. And now let's go back to the slide and copy this program and paste it 
in this man does see. Okay. As soon as you pass the code, okay, the eclipse will detect some error for you. Now sometimes the eclipse will give you some false alert. So what you want to do is compile the program first to see if these errors are real errors or just some false alert. And you want to compile the program by choose project function and then click on build all. Okay, and program will well Eclipse will start to compile the program. Okay, now the errors are gone. Okay, that means it's just some false alert. Okay, and next you want to download the program to the microcontroller, but uh, in default. The compiler will compile a file for debug use. That means it will not create the hex file, that is an executable file for your microcontroller. So you have to switch uh, the compile mode from debug to uh, release. So click the build configuration and then set active to release. Okay, and we build all again. After doing this, you will see a new folder under your test project that's called release. And in that, there is a hex file. That is what you will need. Okay, so you copy that hex file, copy it, and pass it to somewhere. Uh, I usually create a folder called hex. Okay. So uh, I store all the hex file in this folder. All right. So that basically finish everything. And now we have to move to how to download the program to your microcontroller. Okay. So this sh slide shows the instruction to do that. Now first, you have to run RoboPass terminal and use RoboPass software to help you download the program, and then connect. A PC to CM510 and push the mode button on CM510 while pressing the pound, the pound key. The pound key basically is shift plus three, the number three uh, on the left. And then this is on your keyboard, your a keyboard on your PC. Okay, then type L in the bootloader and then select file, transmit file. And then type go and will exit the bootloader. Okay, let me do it step by step for you. Okay, so let's run RoboPlus first. Okay, and run the terminal. Okay, now we don't need RoboPlus, just close it. So in the terminal, here we have to connect it to CM510 and we connect it and choose a appropriate port. Uh, it is COM5 on my PC, so I choose it. And you don't have to change the baud rate, so just click connect. Okay, and now connect. CM510 to your PC, okay, through the serial cable like this, okay. So turn on your CM510, okay, and now press the pound key on your PC keyboard. That means shift number three, okay, and then hit this mode button. Okay, and you will see a lot of pound symbol uh, on the uh, robot class terminal. Then hit enter. And now hit uh, type L, just one L, and hit enter again. And you will show it's ready, ready to write. Now choose the file, transmit file. 
and choose the test.hex that we just create. Okay? And when it gives you the size or checksum, that means the program is downloaded to the microcontroller already. And type go. Now the program will start with execute. Now as you can see on the CM510, okay, the LED start to flash from one to another. So this is the program that we just wrote. Now let me explain how the program works. Let's go back to see the slides. And first, I will talk about how to use the uh, input-output function of the microcontroller. And on the microcontroller, there are many pinouts. And a pin can be used either for input or output. And how do we control those pins? Uh, the functions of those pins are controlled by registers. And registers, a register is more like a switch. And use those switch, you can change the function of a pin to make it a uh, input or a output. And for AVR microcontroller, they are three registers used to control the, the input output of the pins. Okay, they are DDRX, port X, and pin X. So this X means the port. They are A to F. Okay, so for example, for port A, we'll have PA0, PA1, PA2, PA3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, and each bit in those uh, register corresponds to a pin uh, to, of the microcontroller. Okay, so the, the functions of three are as follows. The DDRX is data direction. So it means uh, we can use it to control uh, either input or output. So if we want to make a pin uh, used for output, that means the DDR, uh, DDRX has, we have to set it to one. Okay, so for example, for the output, we set the DDRX to one. And this is bitwise. That means, for example, if we write one here in the uh, bit one, two, I mean bit zero, one, two, three, okay, and those pins are used for output. Okay, and when in output mode, okay, we, if we want to turn on things on CN510, so the device like LED, buzzer, we can turn on the LED to use buzzer to make a sound. If we want to turn them on, okay, we write zero in that bit. Okay, and this means the device is on. So for example, is PX0, 1, 2, 3 are connected to LEDs? Then we write 0 in these bits. Okay, and they are on. Okay, if we write 1 in these bits, that means they are off. And this is just for device on CM510. This is not that intuitive. Usually we say one is hung or high and off is, uh, is off or low, but it just doesn't work like that. Okay, so for input, okay, we write for input. If we want the pin to do input function, we make its DDR to be zero, okay? So for input, DDRX to be zero, okay? And so if we connect the pin to a, bu bu uh, a, a button, 
Okay, so how do we know if it's uh, pressed or not? Okay, when we read a signal in PNX, that's another re register. Okay, so we we make DDIX an output. Let me clean this. Say, if pin 4 here, we make it an input if it is connected to a button. All right, so we write 0 here in the DDRX, OK? And we also write 1 in port X. That is used to turn on a pull-up resistor, OK? And then we go read that bit in pin register. If it is zero, that means the signal is high. Or a button is pressed. Okay. If we read this bit and the number in this bit is one, that means we got a low signal, okay, and the bottom is released. Okay, and again, this is just for the device on CM510, okay. Now, let's read through the code that we just write, okay. So on the right hand side, we can see uh, our code in this yellow box. And in the very beginning, there are some header files. Okay? And he, here is our main program in this bracket. And in the very beginning of the main program, we define if port C is used for input or output. They're over here, okay? And we run this program in the file bracket uh, forever here, okay? So let's see this picture here. We want to flash the LED one by one. Okay, so LED is used for output, right? And in order to make it output, what do we do here? What do we do? We write one in DDRC, okay? Now, uh, the power light is not inside this picture, but it is basically PC0, right? PC0 is over here, okay? And we have PC1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, okay? So we have to make them one, all of them one over here, okay? And we keep this zero. Now, this is declare, de declaring that uh, the DDRC is basically used for output, okay? And this 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 is 7F in hex, okay? So this 0x here means it's hex. And this 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 is binary, right? So what I'm saying is this 0, x, 7, f is equal to 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And you can do the conversion by yourself. And usually we call this binary, and that is hex. So for binary number, we put 0, b, that means it's binary. Okay, and now for port C, we want to what to in the very beginning. What we want to turn all the LED off. So how do we do that? We write one in that bit. That will turn off the LEDs, and we want to turn them off them off except for the power LED. Okay, so power LED is here. So we write one. That means it's on. 
and we write no, we write zero eight. That means it's on. We write one 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 one. There. So all these six LEDs are turned off at the very beginning. Okay? And this is used for output, so we don't need pin C, we close it down. We don't have to control that. Okay? And here in the program, what do we do? Okay? We use a variable called i, and i in this loop, initial value is zero, and we increase i every time and until it is six. Okay, so i moves from zero, then one, then two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And what is doing here? It is controlling the port C to be the complement. Now this Zelda is complement. And then what is it doing here? I let me clean this up. Okay, now let's see here. We have one double arrow I. That double arrow means shift to left bitwise. Okay, so for example, if I is equal to one, that means you shift one to left. Okay, so one is basically zero, 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 one in binary, right? So what we do here is to shift it, this one, to left, okay? So after you do this, that bit will become, that byte will become zero, 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 one, zero, okay? That is i is equal to one. So what is i is equal to two? Okay, this byte will become zero 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 one zero zero. Okay, it's doing this. Okay, and here we have again the Zelda for complement. So for complement, the complement of this byte is one 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 zero one one, and remember. When the bit is zero, the LED is turned on. So this will make what? Make your LED turn on one by one and do the cycle indefinitely. That's basically how this program is run. And let's go back to see the header files that is included in our function. So what are these header files used for? Used for define the input output. Now remember, for uh, the computer, they only remember the numbers. So each pin, uh, each port of the microcontroller is, uh, there's a corresponding number for controlling that pin. Okay, and those numbers are stored here in the header file. Okay, and human beings are good at remember, like we know port A. Oh no. Port A. Okay, that could be some number, say, 0 E F C. Okay, a hex number. But we cannot remember that. And those numbers are stored in those header files. Okay, and delay that H that is used to store the delay. Now let's go back to see previous slide here that we have a delay MS250. What's that? Okay, now this means delay for microsecond 250. And microsecond 250 means 0.25 seconds. Okay. And you have to include that delay that h over here in the very beginning of program in order to use this function. 
Okay, and th that function is stored here. Okay, let's go see where uh, the header file uh, files are stored. Let's go Eclipse. Okay, let's go back here. So in the test, there's an includes, right? That folder. And that is basically created for you. And here we have some I uh, include header files. And click FVR here, you'll see a lot of header files. Okay. And we can see IO.h. Okay, that's the one that we are using. Okay. And for different microcontrollers, like there is a header file to define the pins of it. So you can read those files. Let's double click it. Okay, and you can look into. Those are all the numbers that is defined for microcontroller. Okay. So everything, every time that you need to check what pin is associated with what number, you can go back to read that file. Okay, now we have downloaded the program into our microcontroller and uh, that will cause a problem. That will cause a problem that we cannot use the program provided by uh, Bioloid, by uh, Robotics anymore. The, ro the RoboPass program will not recognize the microcontroller. Let's try it. Now let me connect the CM510 to the PC. Now it's running our program over here. Okay, and if I click RoboPass Manager, okay, and try to find it, it cannot do that. Okay, why is that? That is basically because the firmware that is originally stored in a microcontroller inside CM510 that is wiped out by our program. So in order to make uh, the, the robot pass work again, we have to restore that firmware. And we do that by clicking this button here, the controller firmware management. Okay, click that. And click next. Okay, and you choose the port where the CM510 is connect to, and then you click find. Okay, uh, port is already in use. It's basically occupied by uh, the terminal here. So we disconnect. Okay, and come back. Click find. And ask you to turn off the power and turn on again. And we do that. Turn it off. And turn it on. Okay, and you find it. And now we click, uh, click next. Okay, and click next. And we'll start restore the firmware of CM510. Okay, now it's back. And you can connect uh, to the RoboPlus manager and see the actuators, things like that. Okay. Okay, let's get back to the PowerPoint slides. Now let's move to next example, button. Now in the example, we want to uh, introduce how to do uh, input for a microcontroller. Okay, so there are basically five buttons that we can control on CM510. Start button, up, down, left, right. Okay, for these five buttons, we want to, when we press start button, we want to turn on all the LEDs 
on CM510. And for you, we want to turn on PC4. That means uh, the man manager LED. And PC D, when D is pressed, we want to turn on PC3. Okay, L, PC5, R, PC6. So the buttons are used for input, and the LEDs are used for output. And I list, I, I create some tables that are used to help you to write a program. So for the buttons, those are inputs. Okay, so how do we do inputs? We want to write what? Write zero in a bit of the DDR register, right? So for the buttons, the star button is connected to uh, the zero bit, the zero pin of port D, okay? And that is this one. We want to write zero here. So it is used for input. For the direction buttons, U, D, R, L, this is four. They are connected to pin four to seven in port E. So this four, we have to write zero in order to make it as an input. Okay, and we have to turn on the pull-up resistor. So we write one, one here in the port register. Okay, that will turn on the pull-up. Okay, and the LEDs are used for outputs, right? So the LEDs are a pin six, pin zero to six in port C. Okay, so zero to six, we have to write one in these registers. Okay, so they can become the output. And uh, here we read the numbers in port D, that star button. And if that number is zero, that means your button is pressed. Okay, and if it is one, that means it's what? It is it is not pressed. Okay, so we have to access these bits in the pin register to see if a button is pressed or not. Oh, yeah, I forgot I forget this. So for LED is still the same. In the port C, if you write zero to it, that means it is on. And you write one to it, it is off. Oh, let's go back, uh, let's go read the program. Now let me pull up the Eclipse. Uh, the, the examples in these slides are provided to you and you can download it from the course website. Now the project button is here and let's double click on main.c and this is the source file. And in the beginning we include the header files. And here then we define the button. Like every button there is a corresponding bit, right? And it's not easy to remember those bit. It's easier for us to remember the name. Okay, so you can create a table like this. This basically tells you uh, the LED battery uh, is bit one in some resistor, uh, in some port. Okay, and LED TXT is bit two in some port. Okay, and such as, such as. And here is uh, the table for the bottom. Okay, so bottom up, that is uh, pin four in some port. Okay, in port E. Okay, so this will make your program uh, much more easier to read. Okay, and after that, our main program is here in this bracket. Okay. And uh, in the beginning of 
the main program, we have to uh, define the input or output uh, of the port that is used. Okay, so we have DDRC. DDRC is for what? For LED. So we have to make it output. So we have seven bits from pin zero to seven. Okay, we have to write one to them. Okay, so this is basic the zero x seven f. Okay, and uh, for uh, we have to turn them off all the LED off in the very beginning. So we write one to them again, except power. Right, this is for power. And for port D, those are uh, it is that's associated with the star button. Okay. So basically, you make the star button as an input, and then turn on the pull up resistor. So this is star button, and that's the pull up resistor enable. Okay. And for port C. Okay, these four bits corresponds to the UDRL, the four buttons. And you have to turn the pull-up on by writing one in port. Okay, so that's basically uh, the initialization of the buttons and the LEDs. And here you are doing this. Okay, every time when the button up is pressed, okay, you want to turn on the LED. You want to turn on the LED. And if the button down is on, you want to uh, turn on this LED, the U AUX LED. Okay? And such as, such as. And here uh, is an else. Okay? What do we do else here? We turn off all the LEDs. If there is no button is pressed, Okay, and you compile this program. Okay, the hex file will be in a release folder here. And then we download that program. Okay, now let me turn on microcontroller. Okay, and I press Shift and number three on the keyboard of the PC side and press this red button okay and hit enter and type L and click file transmit and uh, bottom X and it's downloaded and type go again now Let me show you. Okay, so when there is no button pressed, okay, the LEDs are all off, and if you press the star LED, oops, I press the wrong. Uh, I download the wrong file. Let me do that again. It's the bottom one, not the buzzer one. Okay, anyway. Let's do the downloading again. Shift pound, uh, number three and press red button and type L and transmit file. Bottom. Okay, type go. Okay, when you press the LED, uh, start button, all the LEDs are on. And down button, up button, right, left. Okay, and that's all this program about. Okay, and the next example is the serial communication. Okay, and in this example, we want to build a serial communication between the PC and the CM510. And why is that? Because we know on CM510, 
The only way you want to show something is to use the buzzer or the LED. And it is not an efficient way to do that. Also, a better idea is you want to show something. You can uh, transmit it to the PC and display it on PC screen. Uh, it will be very helpful uh, and useful in the debugging. Okay, so here in this program, we want to do one thing. We want to create a number or say a variable and in the memory of the microcontroller. And if we hit the key U on the PC side, on in your keyboard, then that number increase by one. And if you hit the key down, the D of the PC, the number decrease. Okay, and you have to display the number value on the PC screen. And before we uh, look into the program, I have to introduce some idea. It's called uh, interrupt. So the serial communication is driven by interrupt. Interrupt basically is a request from an external device to the microcontroller. It tells the microcontroller, now I need to do something. And then the microcontroller uh, responds. And uh, how does this function enabled? You have to use a uh, function called SEI to enable register of uh, this I register for the interrupt. Okay. So for the serial communication, uh, there is a file, uh, there is some function supplied by uh, Robotics. Uh, those files are in serial.c and you can look into their source file. Okay. And to do serial communication, there are three steps. So first, you have to initialize the serial communication. Okay, and here the function is serial underline initialize. And inside this bracket is uh, the bold rate. And usually, <coughs> usually we write this number and don't change it. Okay, and if we want to read a key from PC, we have to use get character, get C H A R. Okay. And if we want to display something on PC, we send back a message to the PC. We use print app. Okay. And inside the bracket is basically uh, the way that we, we learn how to program in C. Okay. So here the D is a number. Okay. Number is uh, the number of this variable in red. Okay, so let's go read the program. The program name is serial. Click main.c Okay, and it's here. Okay, this is a very short program. So the same in the beginning. We include the header files. Now here in the initial uh, initialization, the serial initialization is over here, and we enable uh, the interrupt. And after that, we print a message to the PC screen. It's called a serial communication example for CM510. Okay, and then we do something forever that is in this while bracket. Okay, the first thing we do is we uh, get character from PC. So this function will work uh, only when there's a request from PC. Okay, so PC send a request. The interrupt uh, of the microcontroller will be informed and it will receive message from PC using this function, get character. And that character is stored in this receive data, in this variable. Okay, and now you use if uh, to determine if that receive data is equal to u or equal to d. Okay, and if it is equal to u, the value that is a variable that you initial here, okay, that is stored in the CM510, that number will increase by one. Okay, and if the character that 
you type is D, that value number will decrease by one. Okay, and after that, you print the result on the screen. Okay, and let's download that program and see how it works. So let's go RoboPass terminal. Okay, and you do that again. Press Shift, Pound, and hit this red button. Okay, enter and type hello and transmit file. Okay, and the uh, example name is serial dot hex. Okay, now you download the program and you type go. And it shows serial communication example for CM510 here. Okay. Now you can communicate with CM510. Now if you hit button like you, again, 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 see the number is going up. Okay, if you hit button D on your keyboard, and it's going down. And if you hit other keys, right, the number is the same, right? Right? Uh, basically, what you're doing here is, let's go back to C function. If you, if you hit a key, okay, and your program read that key, it's neither U nor D. What does it do? It print the value on PC screen again, right? So it doesn't change. It's still the same number. Okay, so this is the example. Okay, the, the, for next example, buzzer. Here we want to control the buzzer on CM510. Okay, we want to turn on the buzzer and all the LEDs when we press the start key on CM510. Okay, the buzzer is controlled uh, by pin 5 or port B. So we want to make this pin as an output pin. Okay, so how do we do that? To be an output pin, we write one in this bit of DDRB. Okay, and if we want to turn on the buzzer, we write zero. That means the buzzer is on. We write one, the buzzer, is off. Okay, let's go read. Uh, let's go see the source code. Okay, so it is in a project buzzer. Double click main.c. Okay, so similar to the previous example, here we define all the buttons, LEDs. Okay, and we in initialize those ports. Okay, and here is if the star uh, button is pressed, okay, we do these things. Okay, and else we uh, turn them off. Okay, so look into the, the program and to see uh, what it is about. Okay, and let me show you how the program runs. So, again, we Press the shift number three on the keyboard and PC side and press that red button on your CM510 and type L and transmit file the buzzer. Okay, and type go. Alright. You press the start key and buzzers start to work like this. Okay, and all the LEDs are on. Okay, so that's example four. Next example is the uh, how to use the microphone on a CM510. So there's a 
microphone sensor, the mic sensor on CM510 that can use to detect sound signals. So that microphone, that mic sensor is on when a certain level of sounds is detected. So it has to be loud enough. Okay. Okay. So uh, here the mic sensor is uh, ping one in port D. Okay. Ping one in port D. And now in, in the example, we want to turn on the LED when the mix sensor, when the mix signal is detected. Okay, so port C is used for the LED. Okay, and we know that for LED, they are used for output. So we have to write one, 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 one here. Okay, and if we want to turn on the LED, we write zero, 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 zero. 0, 0, 0 here. Okay, and we don't need pin C because it's an output. And for the microphone, the mix sensor, okay, it is pin 1 in port D here. Okay, so we have to make it as an input, right? So for input, we write, one, we write 0 there, okay, and we write 1 here to turn on the pull-up resistor, okay? And then we check if this bit in pin D in this uh, register. If it is zero, that is, yes, mix signal. And if it is one, that means no mix signal, okay? And it works like this. And now that's, Let's read the program. Okay, and it's the project MIG over here. Okay. So if the MIG signal is detected, okay, and MIG signal is what? It's ping one in port D, right? So ping one, that is the second bit of this 8-bit uh, register, okay? So, mix signal is detected. It turns on all the LEDs for one second, okay? And else, it's turned off. It's just like that. And let's download the program. Now, let's Load the program. Program name is MIG. Okay, type go. Okay, now the program is loaded. Okay, now it's supposed to detect some sound. Okay, if you clip. Okay, see LEDs are on. That's the program. Now, this is the lecture for today, and I want you to do some practice. And here are some, uh, two, two practices. And I hope you can finish. Uh, the first practice is to turn on the LED one by one for a quarter of a second. And then turn on the buzzer for a second when make signal are detected. So this is very easy. You just have to combine all the programs uh, in examples and you can do that. And uh, second practice is a little bit challenging, but uh, I provide two functions. Uh, to source codes and you, you can use them to complete this practice. So for the practice too, you have to program the buzzer to play music. Okay, when a button is pressed and you have to write the music notes in your program. So here in this program, I supply you buzzer.c and buzzer.h, okay? 
here, I create a program that's called a play node, okay? And I supply these two, buzzer.c and buzzer.h, to you, and you can use them. Just read through this code, and you will know how to use it, okay? And let me show you how it works. What you're supposed to complete is like this. Okay, we load the file. The, so, the file is play node. Okay. Now, when you hit a button, when you press a button, it should play a note like this. Okay. And this is your homework. And this is for the lecture for today. And uh, thank you very much.